We go to the Western Division, and I don't think there's a coincidence here, Joe, that we've got three teams with coaches on the hot seat because Alabama has so much dominated this division where for Nick Saban, about the first half of his tenure, there was always an LSU and Auburn, somebody right there that was close, right on the heels or even better than Alabama. But over the last four or five years, take away a kick six in 2013, and Alabama has completely dominated the division. And uh, uh, it's no coincidence that Les Miles is without a job because of it. Now, right now, we've got Texas A&M, Arkansas, and we've got Auburn all chasing Bama. Let's start with Auburn being the rival and being a team that uh, most recently knocked off Alabama and went to the national championship game in 2013. Yeah. Gus Malzahn brings back the Tigers. They looked really strong the first seven or eight weeks, surprisingly, last year, but really faded down the stretch. Uh, what do you think of the Tigers' uh, chances this year? Yeah, I think it's going to be an uphill battle. I know this is another team that the media loves in terms of Jared Stidham comes over. He's going to be the answer to take the Auburn Tigers to the promised land and challenge Alabama in the SEC West this year. The one problem that Auburn's had over the last few years, Mark, they have one game in which they passed for over 300 yards in the last 26 games. It was in 2015 in the loss to Chad Kelly and Ole Miss. You look at Auburn's offense, since they made it to the national championship game uh, in 2013, they averaged that year 328 rushing yards per game. The second year under Nick Marshall, they rushed for 255 yards per game. In 2015, they dipped all the way down to 196 yards, rushing yards per game. But in their six losses, they, they averaged 158 yards on the ground. Last year with Petaway and, and uh, uh, on Johnson, they were back up to 271 rushing yards per game. That's why they had a fast start. But their inability to stretch teams vertically really was their Achilles heel, especially in the Sugar Bowl loss to Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma. Now you're going to ask this offense again that just got back on track from a rushing standpoint to really now balance it out with Jared Stidham from Baylor. The problem with Jared Stidham is he's a timing quarterback. Baylor is a spread offense attack. They work on a, a four-step drop where he had to make his reads and progressions very, very quickly. Even though Auburn runs a spread offense, it's not based off the same type of philosophy that they had with Arp Riles and Baylor. So asking Jared Stidham to make the transition, again, he's not a mobile quarterback. He can move outside the pocket, but he's not like a Nick Marshall type. He doesn't have great athleticism. I think it's going to be a long year, coupled with the fact of the defensive losses. They lose Montrevious Adams and Carl Lawson to that defensive front. It's going to be a big task for the Auburn Tigers in the 2017 season. Folks, if you want to check out one of the most uh, dominant rushing attacks in college football history, go back uh, to maybe uh, collegefootballreference.com. Look up the 2013 Auburn Tigers. Joe referenced it right there. Just don't consider that Air Force and Army rushed for that type of yardage. Consider the schedule. It was brutal. And that team with Nick Marshall running the show, say what you will about his passing of the football, he ran that thing to a T, and they had a great offensive line, Trey Mason, uh, in the backfield. And uh, I can't think of the fullback's name right now. They had an excellent full blocking fullback that I can't come up with his name right now. But uh, Auburn was just a legit, uh, ran for over 500 yards uh, in a number of games against top quality competition. 